Hey guys, so welcome to OBC Academy. Okay, in the last video, we discussed about the difference between marine insurance, fire insurance, and life insurance. Right now, we are moving on to the next topic that is communication. We'll start with this communication and we'll continue this chapter. Okay, before that, make sure you subscribe your channel because we have tons of videos like this, videos like this, obviously. Okay, without further ado, let's begin this communication services first of all we have to know what is communication then we'll learn about what is communication services probably we all know what is communication communications means or communication means a way of exchanging information or speaking it may be in any kind like in speaking or in writing or even sometimes symbol expression that is called communication it may be tv it may be radio or it may be anything you are sending message or information to other person that is called communication and communication may happen face to face but here uh, we are talking about uh, business services communication and in this communication services that service uh, basically which helps to run business smoothly those are called communications for business services okay you may be wondering how it can help to the business and uh, what difference it makes. See, business cannot establish or business cannot grow by simply starting a business and not communicating with the other world or outside the world. Communication is essential part to exchange your ideas, to exchange or supply your goods or to explain your goods to the consumer. You will need communication services. So obviously you need communication to interact with your suppliers and consumers and competitors so business services is basically which helps to smooth out your business effectively business communication is something but a services which helps to business establish a link between the outside world through the communication so that is called communication services and moving on to the next thing in that communication that is communication services classified into two groups First one is postal services and uh, telegram services, the second one. Okay, postal services. What is postal services? Postal services is a system which used to send mail, parcel from one place to other place. That is called postal services. India, we have uh, Indian Postal Service, which is a biggest postal service department in India. And uh, we may compare to other countries. It's quite big because we have major divisions, circles in that. So the postal service which act as till now, it is great. And we cannot beat these postal services from a private sector. So that's a postal service. Before moving on to the telecom service, we have a further categories in postal services. Not only post and parcel has been delivered to the customers or consumers, post office also providing financial facilities to its consumers, to its members by way of variety of schemes like public fraud and fund national savings certificate scheme and many other like recording deposit savings account deposits and borrowings so these are the additional facilities which is given by the post office and this can be happen through deposit of money from the consumers so moving on to the next one that is mail facility a mail facility is again a facility which provide by postal department which transmit a parcel from one place to other place so these are the main facilities which is provided by post office moving on to the next additional facilities allied facilities which is given by postal department so these are quite simple things which provided by the postal department so first one is greeting post if you ever want to send a greeting to a person you can send through that and we have media post and international money transfer passport facilities speed post e-billing We'll talk about that e-billing in the next slide but right now these are the additional facilities this is not that much important but still we have to know what are the additional facilities which is given by the post office so coming to the new thing that is e-bill post what is e-bill post it's an electronic bill or it's an electronic payment for this i can explain with you an example so if you are using an airtel landline or a broadband internet connection you will get mail monthly to pay the bill from that particular organization or company so that is e-billing if i explain in the meaning this is very simple e-bill is nothing but 
an electronic bill which is transferred from email or over the internet for a consumer in order to pay the bill that is called e-bill you will get a bill through electronic devices like or from a link or from whatsapp or gmail or whatever so these are electronic bill post you get a post but it's in the form of digital way so that is e-billing so next the second heading of uh, communication service that is a telecom service Telecom service is a world-class uh, telecommunication infrastructure services which basically provides an exchange of information over the distance areas. That's the main intention of telecom service. Okay, It's a very rapidly developing industry like its developing rate in the last decades are more than 50,000 percent. I said 50,000 percent. That's a very rapid growth in these kind of uh, telecom services which actually provides data, voice transmission and message services through communication. And moving on to the next one that is the various types of telecommunication services. Like I said in a point, we are discussing in a brief, the various types of telecommunication services are the first one is cellular mobile phone. Telecom services providing a cellular mobile phone services which include voice, non-voice data services within the boundary of a limit. So this is the first type of services which provide by telecom service. Moving on to the second type of services, the second type of telecommunication services are radio paging services which provides a radio service which is very affordable rate or even at a free cost. It's a one-way information broadcast which spread across the nation. So this is again one of our services which is provided by them. Moving on to the next one that is fixed line services. Telephone services also provide fixed line services which helps in voice, non-voice data services. You can call to someone and you can use internet with uh, data service. So this is a fixed line service which is help in uh, linking long distance services and rural areas. And moving on to the next one that is cable services. Telecommunication services which also provides a cable services. These telecommunication services take rights from TV channels so that they can present this TV channel to the consumers. Sometimes it is one way and it may also provide two-way communication. Okay, That include voice, non-voice and information services. This is cable services. Again, this is another service. So moving on to next service that is VSAT service. VSAT service is nothing but V means very, S means small, A means aperture, T means terminal. Very small aperture terminal, it's a satellite based communication which is very useful for business people and government agencies. They cannot rely on other communication services in the rural areas. So they depend on these VSAT services which helps in urban and rural areas. Moving on to the next one, DTS services. DTS services is, again, everyone know about these DTS services. It's a satellite-based media service provider by cellular communication with the help of a small antenna and set of box. You can watch televisions uh, through that. And uh, moving on to the next thing, uh, that is transportation. It's not that much important because uh, we don't have uh, types of transportation or something like that. We only have meaning, so get over after the meaning. So what is uh, transportation? Transportation is nothing but moving people or thing from one place to other place. So I think this sentence is very simple. You're just moving from one place to other place. It may be either people or it may be goods. So this is transportation. Moving on to the next important thing that is warehousing services. Warehousing services is nothing but a go down. Go down is nothing but warehouse. Warehouse is nothing but go down. So what is warehousing services? Warehousing is nothing but storing product in scientific and systematic way to maintain original value and quality with easy handle. It also helps in transportation pretty easily. So this is called warehousing. You may see in this picture, they are arranged in systematic and very neat way. They have locations and through that location, they can find goods and they can easily verify how much quantity they left, how much quantity they have. And this is very important warehousing concept because you can pretty much see warehouse everywhere right now. These warehouses are very useful for the importer, exporters, wholesale, transporters and, and online business. If I want to talk about warehousing services further, like there are so many online shopping apps there, Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra. These people are 
very familiar with this kind of warehousing system they store their goods in a very particular location whenever you book online it will get picked by the workers like just these persons are picking from their location and some other people are auditing there so it can be done through warehousing okay the warehousing services uh, helps in systematic maintenance of goods and services in a proper scientific way godown was used in like last few decades but now warehousing concept has been pretty much everywhere right now so moving on to the next one that is types of warehouses there are so many types of warehouses first one is private warehouse private warehouse is owned by private organizations or private individuals they'll store their goods and services like flipkart has its warehouse so that's private warehouse and sometime uh, these warehouses are used for multi branding purposes multi branding purposes just like i took an example of flipkart flipkart store their goods so goods has been divided into so many categories and so many varieties those are called multi products branding or multi product companies like flipkart has a to z of goods so that's how this private warehouse works and moving on to the public warehouses public warehouses for the public so anybody can use this to store goods by traders manufacturers the key here is these fees are very nominal because it is operated by the government and it regulated by government so that's why it is called as public warehouses moving on to the next one that is bonded warehouses bonded warehouses are licensed by the government it store goods till the payment of tax has been done by the importer this goods will be unlocked whenever importer paying goods and service tax whenever the importer pay taxes for them until that they'll hold the goods in bonded warehouse moving on to the next one government warehouses it's not public warehouse it's a government warehouse government warehouse is fully managed and owned by the government in public warehouse it is owned by government but the right to operate that warehouses will be transferred to third party or private organizations the rules and regulations will be maintained by government only but the government warehouses is fully maintained by the government and owned by government and it is run by the government organizations for the public help like food corporation of india central warehousing corporation these kind of government companies own these government warehouses that's why it is called as government warehouses so next cooperative warehouses cooperative warehouses is nothing but a warehouse which is established for the purpose of storing goods of its members of the society it only provide warehousing services for its members sometimes farmers gather together to form a cooperative warehouses so these farmers can store their goods in that cooperative society warehouse that's why it is called as cooperative society moving on to the next one functions of warehousing how the warehouse functions the first function is consolidation what is consolidation consolidation is nothing but combining okay these warehouses will receive materials or goods from different productions or different farmers or different companies to gather together or to combine together and it will be sent to a single party or single company an easy explanation by seeing this chart just remember a b c are three different person it may be three different company they are producing same thing and that will be bought to one place and from that consolidation it is dispatching or forwarding to a particular consumer or single a single company moving on to the next type that is breaking the bulk it's a dead opposite of the last one consolidation so what do you mean by this it's an opposite again a bulk quantity of goods will be received from one person and that will be distributed to different plants or different consumers or different areas so that is breaking the bulk moving on to the next one that is stockpiling sometimes we have to store some goods like seasonal goods are there for example some company may need some raw material which is not available every time like maza which is not available at every time because it's a seasonal fruit you cannot buy immediately whenever you want if you want to manufacture maza on the month of uh, november december you cannot get those seasonal fruits so what you will do you will pile the stock that means storing the goods for your production and manufacture that is called stockpiling whenever it available at a cheaper rate you store it for the purpose of manufacture that is stockpiling moving on to the next one that is value added services what is value added services again warehouses provide different services some manufacturer need again this kind of uh, function for their product 
like certain value added services has to be added for this fair houses like mixing in some cases like packing in some cases like labeling in some cases is very essential so for some product like these kind of value added services is essential again this service is also provided by warehouses okay moving on to the next one price stabilization sometime you may get product at very cheap rate so on that time they'll store the goods and they will release it whenever price get normalized or at equilibrium it is purely based on economic supply and demand are the two things which determine price in the market suppose a tomato or onion price is very fluctuation in order to make a price stabilize for these vegetables what they will do they will store in warehouses to create a demand situation and they will release whenever there is a quite a high demand whenever there is a high supply low demand price will fall and vice versa so it also act as price stabilization you also know about supply and demand in economics so make sure you go through that because economic is a very interesting subject more than business studies uh, there is a thing people will always neglect theory subject saying that it's a theory it is not useful with my experience i'll say theory subjects are very useful subject don't read for sake of exam just understand for the sake of your life just understand while reading definitely demand and supply are a very important topic i love economic and economics are very interesting subject for me so hola that's it it's an end okay congratulations we just finished this chapter so if you still not subscribe consider subscribing and comment below what you felt about this video and if you have any questions like that okay guys thank you for watching see you in the next chapter bye